Man United draw in the Europa League again, 1-1 this time with Jose Mourinho's Fenerbahce. Is it a decent result? Is it a good result? I will give my opinion in this video. I think it was an extremely interesting game. We had so many weird things happen, not necessarily weird. Andre Onana kept coming to the rescue on more than one occasion. Did we deserve to win that game? I don't actually know. Did we deserve to lose? I don't think we deserve to lose. But welcome to the Red Devils Den. Let's get into this video. Man United played out to a 1 1 draw to Fenerbahce. This is now our third draw in a row in the Europa League. And in the new format of the Europa League, the top eight go through immediately. The rest, up until 24, have to play it out to get through. I think after everyone else's result yesterday, we were sitting pretty in 15th. The Europa League just does not seem like it's our friend this year. Um, it looks like we are struggling. We have two games coming up that it looks like we might win. But then again, who ever knows when it comes to Manchester United? And I think the thing that we have to be extremely careful about here is that we have to go far in this tournament. I think the Europa League is important because we're in it. We're not in the Champions League. It's also a ticket to the Champions League. And I do think we, we should prioritize it. Anyway, let's get into the game. If you're new to the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoy the content, let me know your thoughts in the comments and smash a like on this video. Let's start with the team that Eric Ten Hag puts out. I'm not really too worried about Fenerbahce, Amrabat, Fred, Tadic, who really cares. In a series goal, decent goal, but Lindelof, which I'm going to speak about. The team Eric Ten Hag puts out, very interesting team, Masrawi. I initially thought when I saw five defenders, we were playing with a back five. And I thought, who plays a back five against Mourinho? Come on. We know they're going to be set up for us not to score any goals. But anyway, we, we started with a team with Masrawi in the number 10 position. I thought that was absolutely diabolical. And it looked diabolical, although we got the goal. Um, a very, very good goal from Christian Eriksen. I think Eriksen has really been, um, similar to that of Johnny Evans, has really been a stalwart for us when we've needed him when it comes to injuries. I just thought this was our time to see a number 10. We could have played Masrawi next to Gate, but for whatever reason, I don't know why he put a random person like Masrawi in number 10. It didn't really make sense to me. But anyway, we got the goal. Eriksen um, got a good goal. I thought in the the, pos the possession st um, stats in the first half were scary, actually. They were over 60% possession, Fenerbahce. So we didn't see much of the ball. Although we know Ten Hag wants to play a possession-based football, we clearly can't do it yet. Uh, we couldn't do it against Fenerbahce, so that was quite interesting. Obviously, this in we started the defense in defense with Delit and with Delit, Martinez, Lindelof, and Dallo. Uh, clearly, Victor Lindelof was he was okay, but clearly he was lacking match fitness. And that goal that came in in the second half from Inesari, I just think was absolutely weird. The ball goes past Victor Lindelof. He makes no attempt. No effort to jump and go and get it and just be in the way of Enesiri. He gets a goal. It's 1-1. Other than that, do I think Fenerbahce could have come close and scored? Yes, they could have. Andre Onana made two incredible saves. One of them was absolutely out of this world. And I think the, the main takeaway to take away from this, and I'll speak about Marcus Rashford before I go to my takeaway. Marcus Rashford again yesterday was deployed on the right wing. Now, remember last week he got real um, positive plaudits. He got good positive feedback. But we're hearing that he's not really enjoying playing on the right-hand side. And why would he? His preferred position is on the left. The thing is, we're in a position now where we can't drop Garnacho. He, whenever he plays, he shows what an important part of our team he is. And all the good things coming, all the good things against that game, against Fenerbahce, were coming down that left-hand side with Garnacho making it happen, whether it was a shot, whether it was putting the ball in. And I think Marcus Rashford is now going to realize that he has probably lost his spot. Now, this is the weirdest thing about it. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. The person who's actually losing out the most here is Ahmad. Eric Ten Hag can't drop Garnacho and he can't drop Marcus Rashford. Therefore, someone has to be dropped. Why has Ahmad not been playing? 
because Ten Hag is trying something new. He's putting Garnacho on the left, but because he has to keep Marcus Rashford happy, he's putting Rashford on the right. And who's suffering because of that? Ahmad. I do not understand why Anthony came on as a sub against Fenerbahce. He got injured anyway. Obviously, it's not his fault. But I don't know why he came on. It made no sense. Ahmad has been in extremely, extremely good form. And I honestly don't understand why he came on as a sub instead of Ahmad. But let me make this point extremely clear. Ahmad has now fallen off because Marcus Rashford has to play. And so does Garnacho. Where does Garnacho, where does Ahmad fit in? And unfortunately, because Ten Hag has to keep these two players happy, well, one of them, which is Marcus Rashford, he has to keep them extremely happy. He cannot drop Marcus Rashford, which is, which is extremely sad. I personally don't think um, that Ahmad deserves this kind of treatment. And this is the thing. We could see Ahmad and Anthony leave in January because Marcus Rashford won't get dropped. And even if he doesn't like being on the right, he wants to play football, right? He wants to play and Ten Hag loves him. He obviously has to make it work with him. He's the star boy of Man United. He's our best player. Um, on his day. So I think the person really losing out here is Ahmad, which is extremely sad. I really feel sorry for him. I know he's not going to play now. Um, he's not going to play much, which is quite sad, but it is what it is. Ter Eric Ten Hag has to make his decisions. The scoreline 1-1, did we deserve to win that game? I think we did. We had an amazing chance with Dallow coming in. Should he have taken the shot? Should he have passed? He obviously did the cutback into no man's land nobody was there should he have taken the shot i think he should have taken the shot it would have been much better um i think i'm getting sick or i am sick because my nose is just absolutely bad but i think ama um on the fenerbahce thing should we have won that game we probably had the better chances to win it but remember fenerbahce also had chances which andre nana did really well and manuel Garte also did that goal saving stop so i think the I think realistically, it was a decent game. I was extremely impressed by Ogate. I wasn't really that keen on him when he signed. I still stand by my thing that he looks the best when Casemiro is with him. In that second half, we went to another level when Casemiro came on and everyone went into their legitimate positions. Masrawi went back to right back. Everyone went into the legitimate positions and we looked like a real team. And Casemiro does that for Ogate, I think. I think Ogate and Mainu doesn't really work for me. I don't see us as a strong defensive, as a strong midfield unit um, in the defense. But yeah, you let me know your thoughts on the game. 1-1, one, one, our third draw in the Europa League. We have to take this seriously. We have to start winning. But how do we win? I really do not know. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video.